Hi, I'm Eli Sagor with the University of Minnesota. Uh, this is a short video just introducing and reviewing some very basic concepts related to silviculture. This is one in a series of short videos uh, that we've developed uh, related to this one. So this video is going to focus really on, as I said, the basics of silviculture. We'll start with what, what is it? Uh, the Dictionary of Forestry, produced by SAF, defines silviculture as the art and science of controlling the establishment, growth, composition, health, and quality of forests to meet the diverse needs and values of landowners and society on a sustainable basis. Uh, there's a lot in this. We often focus on the um, two concepts of art and science, the science pertaining to the ecology of the systems that we're managing, economics, uh, social science, and a variety of other scientific fields, and the art relating really to the creativity inherent in good silviculture, uh, given the, the complexity, the diversity, uh, and, 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 and the nature of the systems that we're managing. We can also think of silviculture as applied forest ecology. Uh, we're managing complex systems, uh, complex ecosystems. Uh, in order to understand those systems, we have to know something about the silvics of the trees, the individual attributes of the trees uh, that compose those systems. Uh, when applying forest ecology through silviculture, we generally take a long-term focus, looking at least through a full rotation from regeneration through final harvest, and often looking beyond that. Um, and we're going to focus uh, on using or applying forest ecology to achieve multiple outputs. Uh, these often relate to the production of water, wildlife habitat, wood, recreational quality, carbon, uh, and increasingly uh, a diverse set of additional outputs uh, from these systems. Uh, and although we've been focusing on applied ecology and sort of that science side, there are a number of social and economic considerations that underlie and constrain or drive our silvicultural decisions and actions as well. Uh, these, uh, the more prominent ones, include landowner objectives. Different landowners of even of very similar forest systems might uh, have different objectives that would lead them to apply different silvicultural uh, treatments. A cost of various treatments can be a major factor uh, constraining our silvicultural decisions. Operational concerns, including moving heavy equipment around in the woods, uh, taking care to avoid damaging existing trees or other aspects of that ecosystem. Uh, marketability of forest products and, and the state of markets are huge drivers of silviculture. Generally, our silvicultural treatments are paid for uh, through the harvest and sale of products uh, through that treatment. And so, of course, markets are a huge consideration as we uh, develop our silvicultural plans. And really, silviculture can be thought of um, maybe most accurately as a set of tools to be deployed creatively. Uh, there are many of these different parts and systems, and, and, and really we need to be creative as we think about how we uh, take all of this information in and create a prescription uh, and ultimately a treatment on the ground. A really crucial or central concept in silviculture is that of the desired future condition. Uh, we uh, use silviculture to foster growth and development of system attributes that we really are interested in, that these things together we might think of as our desired future condition. DFC is often thought of uh, in terms of what species we want to have within that system. The system or the stand's structural attributes, uh, timber volume and quality that might, we might want to produce, wildlife habitat elements that we might want to produce. Uh, in some cases, increasingly, we think about complexity as an outcome uh, or a part of that uh, desired future condition. We might also think about production of carbon or, again, a wide variety of other things inherent in or as part of that desired future condition. And we communicate our silvicultural decisions and intent and plans through a prescription. The purpose of a prescription is to document our thinking, document the, the uh, applied ecology and the process we intend to use as we treat that stand. A prescription generally includes the goals and objectives that we have in mind, as well as the desired future condition, and a schedule and description of treatments that we intend to implement throughout the life of that stand, uh, from, in some cases, before initial regeneration all the way through 
to uh, final harvest. So this concludes the first video. In subsequent videos, we'll go into more detail on silvics, silvicultural systems, and a variety of other things. Thanks.